Auzu billahi minash shaitani rajim. Bismillahir rahmanir rahim. Dear learners, how are you all? I hope you all are fine by the grace of God. I am fine too. Actually, I am trying to be fine. These days we are facing very many difficulties because of the global pandemic coronavirus. We are passing a very critical time. All the educational institutions are closed because of this pandemic. All the teachers are sitting idle at home, like me. And you, all the students, are also sitting idle at home. You don't have much contact with your uh, textbooks. You don't have much contact with your studies. But this condition should not go on. Because of this pandemic, our educational system has uh, widely been hampered. But we should compensate these losses by doing something. What should we do? We must not sit idle. We must continue the process of learning and teaching by somehow. Government is uh, broadcasting classes on TV. Many teachers are doing classes, taking classes on the internet personally. Many educational institutions, schools, colleges are taking online classes these days. And with that continuity, Motkola ML High School has decided to take classes online. And as an English teacher, I have also uh, some responsibilities. I should do something. I think I should do something. If I am sitting idle, my students will be at loss. They will not, uh, they cannot continue their studies. So I wanted to make some videos, some tutorials for you so that you can watch them at home. As uh, your uh, school is closed, you should watch these videos at home and practice as I instruct you. Okay, let's start today. Well, this is the first class actually uh, on behalf of our school. All the uh, honorable teachers of our school will take uh, uh, classes on their respective subjects and you will uh, get all the videos on this uh, face, uh, Facebook page. Uh, this uh, page has been created uh, in order to broadcast or in order to uh, post videos classes for you i hope uh, you will be connected with this page you like uh, this page and uh, visit this page regularly and uh, you will uh, be getting updates every day okay i would like to uh, start my class now okay let's uh, go to the slide This is my slide. So uh, first of all, I would like to welcome everybody to my class. And uh, you uh, must know me. This is Abdul Rahim, and uh, I'm an assistant teacher, Motkola ML High School, Pakundia Keshurganj. ML means multilateral or multi-level. And this class is supposed to be for, uh, class, uh, for the students of class 9 and 10. And I will take uh, this class on uh, second English second paper. And today's topic is transformation. Transformation of simple, complex, and compound sentences. You know, according to the structure, sentences are of three kinds, simple, complex, and compound. And today's subtopic is phrase and clause. 
because without understanding phrases and clauses we cannot understand uh, the structures the uh, forms of the sentences simple complex and compound so before diving into transformation before going into transformation we should we have to know about some thing what is that phrases and clauses before uh, discussing transformation of simple complex and compound sentences we must uh, learn what is phrase and what is a clause so let's see what is a phrase do you know what is a phrase you may know some of you may know but today i will make it clear to ev uh, every one of you what is a phrase let's see the definition of a phrase a phrase is two or more than two words having no finite verbs finite verbs no finite verbs used as a single element of an of a sentence is it clear if two or more than two words are used as a single part of speech or single element of a subject element means part of speech or element means a subject object complement verb adverb preposition and the, all the eight parts parts of speech and subjects objects and complement if two or more than two words work as a single element suppose two work two words or more than two words work as a subject two words work uh, as an object or two or more than two words um, uh, work as a complement as a complement it will be called a phrase i hope you understand if you don't understand let's see another definition it may be clear to you or a phrase is two or more than two uh, parts of speech having no finite verbs used as a single part of speech of a sentence let me explain a phrase is two or more than two parts of speech two or more than two parts of speech and there are uh, eight part of um, parts of speech suppose noun pronoun adjective adverb preposition conjunction interjection and what is that okay two or more than two parts of speech having no finite verb and there must not be any finite verbs and i must have discussed what is a finite verb finite verb is a verb that corresponds to the subject a non finite verb does not correspond to the forms to the uh, number and uh, persons of subject so if two or more than two parts of speech without uh, any uh, finite verbs are used as a single part of speech two part of speech two parts of speech used as a single part of speech one part of speech is called a sentence and the condition is that there must not be any finite verb okay let's see some example after seeing the examples you may be clear let's see some examples students enjoy many facilities students means students is a noun students uh, are the persons who study okay uh, and uh, it is known to uh, every every one of you students enjoy many facilities they have many facilities okay what is the subject in this sentence students the subject of this sentence is students and what is students students is a word it is a part of speech it is a noun Okay, let's see another example. Students studying in the school enjoy many facilities. Can anyone tell me what is the subject of this sentence? Students studying in the school enjoy many facilities. Is students subject? Is studying subject? Is in subject? This subject? School subject? Okay, let's see. What is the subject of this sentence? 
subject of the sentence is students studying in this school the subject of this sentence is not students not studying not in not this not school but all these five words students studying in this school students is a noun studying is a verb in is a the pre, uh, preposition this pronoun school another noun so to noun a verb a preposition a pronoun all these five words are working as a single part of speech that is noun subject these five words are working as a subject so many words more than two words are working as a single part of speech and there is no finite verb in these five words is there is there any finite verb studying studying is a verb but is studying a finite verb no studying is not a finite verb because ing added verb is not a finite verb ing added verb means gerund or present participle present participle and gerund is not a finite verb so there is no finite verb in these uh, five words and these five words are working as a subject so this is a phrase okay let's see and it is a phrase because more than two words are used as a single part of speech and that is now let's see another example i like eating do you know the meaning of this sentence <laughs> you all understand you everybody knows right everybody knows this sent a sentence the meaning of this sentence okay what is the subject of this sentence i i is the subject i is <laughs> not it i is the subject of the sentence and what is the verb like like is a transitive verb and we must have uh, discussed this uh, um, a transitive and intransitive verbs in earlier classes in class 8 9 etc transitive verb must have an object a verb that must have an object or a verb that has an object is called a transitive verb so i is a subject and like is a transitive verb so like must have a trans object must have an object and what is the object of the sentence absolutely and of course obviously it is eating right eating is an object of this sentence okay i is a word like is a word eating is a word and every single word is working as a single part of speech and there is no phrase here is there any phrase here is i a phrase is like a phrase is eating a phrase no i is a single word like is a single word and eating is a single word and every single word is working as a single part of speech as one part of speech they are doing their own work okay let's see another example i like eating mangoes the same sentence or the similar sentence like the previous one i is the subject like is a verb eating is another verb mangoes is a noun so i is a subject and like is a finite verb and like must have an object because like is a transitive verb right what is the object what is the object in this sentence can anyone tell me okay let's see here the object of the verb like is eating mangoes what i like what do i like i like mangoes do i like eating do i like mangoes no i like eating mangoes and the object in this sentence is not only eating not only mangoes but the object in this sentence is eating mangoes two words eating is a non-finite verb and mangoes is a noun a verb and a noun together are working as an object and object is a noun object must be a noun or pronoun so here 
It is a phrase. What is a phrase? Eating mangoes is a phrase. Okay, let's see another example. I got your message. Do you understand this line? It is very simple. I got your message. I received your message. Or, or I found your message. The similar thing. I is a subject. God is a verb, right? In this sentence. Your message is the object. I got, I subject, got, a verb, your message, object. Because a got is a transitive verb. And got is a word, right? Got is a one word. And it is working as a verb. A verb, a single word. Got, got is a single word. And it is uh, working as a verb, a single part of speech. A verb is a single part of speech. So, a word, and it is a word. Because... It, there is no other words here single word is working as single part of speech it is a word here the verb got is a single word let's see the uh, this example another example I got into the car got into what is got into what is the verb in this sentence I got into the car I entered the car I is a subject. God is a verb. Into is a preposition. The car is a noun. But here, got into is verb. Not only got, not only into. These two words together are working as a verb. So it is called a phrase. Because two words are working as a single part of speech. They are working as a verb and so a verb and a preposition. If a verb and a preposition are work, uh, are used as a verb, then it is called phrasal verb or verbal phrase. It is also called verbal phrase. Here two words, got and into, are used as a single part of speech. If we use got separately and into separately they are two part of speech got is a verb into is a preposition but together here together these two words were, are working as a verb so it is a phrase and there is a condition that there is no finite verb got into and it is called a phrasal verb or verbal phrase is it clear now Is it clear to you what is a word and what is a place? Let me repeat or make it clear again. A phrase is two words or more than two words where there are no finite verbs. And these two or more than two words will work as a single part of speech. Many part of speech, many parts of speech, are working as a single part of, part of speech then it will be called a phrase if there is no finite verb in those words if it is clear to you then answer me if you understood tell me if the underlined part of the next sentence is a word or a phrase I'm going to give you a sentence and uh, the some part will be underlined there and you have to tell me in the comment section if it is a phrase or it is a word let's see coronavirus is a global pandemic you have to tell me if a global pandemic is a word or a phrase a global pandemic it is a word is it a word or a phrase okay you can give your answer in the comment section let's see next step what is a clause we have done a discussion with uh, on phrase now we are heading towards clause if you are clear with phrase it will be very easy for you to understand what is a clause let's see 
a clause is two or more than two words having one or more final verbs used as a single parts of speech of a sentence do you remember the definition of a phrase do you remember okay if not if not let's see it again with that of a clause together side by side phrase let's see the definition of a phrase and uh, the definition of a clause and you have to find the difference a phrase is two or more than two parts of speech having no final verbs used as a single part of speech of a sentence and we have already discussed this right okay then the next definition of clause a clause is two or more than two words having two having one sorry having one or more final verbs at least one final verbs verb or more the, it, there can be uh, more final verbs used as a single part of speech of a sentence what is the difference these two definitions are similar very similar the only the only difference is that in phrase there will be no finite verb but in clause there must be one or more than one finite verbs and a phrase is also is also used as a single part of speech a clause is also used as a single part of speech is it clear to you now if it is not clear to you let's see some other definition a clause is a sentence used as a part of as a part of another sentence a clause act is actually a sentence a clause has all uh, the abilities all the uh, qualities of a sentence a sentence must have a subject and a finite verb in the same way a clause must have a subject and a finite verb then if a subject and a finite verb is used as a part of another sentence it is called a clause let me explain if a sentence is used as a part of another sentence then it will not be called a sentence it will be called a clause right okay if it is clear or if it is not clear no problem uh, we will see some examples after seeing the examples it may, uh, may be clear to you example one i know him it is a very simple sentence i always try to use simple sentences so that you understand easily i know him i subject no verb him object right and him is a word him is a word right not a phrase not a clause because it is only one word and there is no finite verb no other uh, part of speech only one word uh, only one part of speech is uh, used or is working as a single part of speech one part of speech is used as a one part of speech so it is a word it is not a phrase not a clause i know what he does I know about him I know uh, his activity I know what uh, his job is etc I know I is a subject and no is a verb no is a transitive verb again like like and there must uh, be an object no must have an object okay, sorry what is the object here is a subject no is an object sorry no is a verb so what is the object of this sentence the object of the sentence is what he does because what do you know if we ask the subject by what and whom the answer will be 
object i know what do you know if i ask you what do you know then you have to say what he does i know what he does so in this sentence what he does is an object or is the subject of the sentence it is a clause how it is a clause because there are more than one words what he does what is a subordinate conjunction or interrogative pro uh, pro pronoun it may be a subordinate conjunction or interrogative pronoun he is a subject does is a verb and it is a finite verb not a non-finite verb so what he does all these three words are working as a single object a single part of speech that is object and there is a finite verb so it is a clause if there uh, uh, were no finite verb it would be it would not be a clause it would be a phrase let's see another example okay uh, this uh, clause is used as a noun another example people who wash hands properly with soap can be free from coronavirus this sentence is very uh, recent uh, related with a very recent topic coronavirus who wash hands properly with soap this part uh, has been underlined what is the subject in this sentence can you tell me people people is the subject in this sentence people can be free from coronavirus people can be free from coronavirus it is a principal clause or it is a full sentence if we separate or take out uh, the underlined parts uh, part from the sentence the meaning of the sentence is, uh, is intact uh, it will be uh, the meaning of the sentence will be intact no problem then uh, there will be a full complete sense but who wash hands properly with soup what is this what is this uh, what is this uh, part of the sentence working this part is working as an adjective of the subject all these one two three four five six six words who interrogative pronoun or subordinate conjunction wash when adverb hence noun properly adverb with preposition soap and other noun all these five words are working as a, an adjective an adjective is a single part of speech one part of speech all these five words different parts of speech are working as a single part of speech and there is a finite part that is wash so it is a clause i hope you are clear now who wash hands properly with soap used as an adjective these all these words are used as an adjective of the subject people these words modify or describe people who can be free from coronavirus those people who wash hands properly with soap now what's the difference between a phrase and a clause do you understand okay let me repeat or explain again a phrase is two or more than two words having no finite verb used as a single part of speech if more than two or more than two words are used as a single part of speech if more than two two or more than two parts of speech are used as a as a one part as one part of speech it is called a phrase if there is no finite verb and the same definition applies to clause the only difference is that two or more than two words are used as a single part of speech having a finite verb if there is a finite verb in those uh, words and used as a uh, as a part of speech these words will be called a clause or in uh, a simple uh, explanation we can say that if a sentence 
having a subject and a finite verb is used as a part of another subject, another sentence, it is called at once. Okay, let's see. And tell me which of the uh, which of the underlined parts is a phrase and which one is a clause. I'll write down. People who wear masks when they go uh, go out are safer than those who don't. Here are the underlined words who wear masks. Is it a phrase or a clause? You have to tell me. Give your answer in the comment section, right? Okay. I will uh, watch or I will check your answers very carefully and uh, uh, give you feedback. Let me read the sentence again. People who wear masks when they go out are safer than those who don't. It is uh, maybe it, this the meaning of the sentence may be clear to you. People who wear masks when they go out while going out, if people wear masks while going out, they will uh, be safe, uh, uh, and they will be safer than those those people who don't wear masks, right? Okay, give your answer in the comment section. Now, kinds of clauses. How many kinds of clauses? are there do you know okay no problem let's see there are three types of clauses three kinds or three types principal clause subordinate clause and coordinate clause okay let's not waste time here let's see the definition of these clauses what is the principal clause Principle. Do you know the meaning of principle? Principle is the head of a college, right? Or a university. Okay. It is uh, the, that principle is not uh, this principle or this principle is not that principle. The uh, spelling is the same. That is not, uh, not a problem. Principle means main. Principle. Okay, let's see the definition. A principal clause is also called an independent clause. Independent, not dependent. Uh, it does not depend on any other clause for its meaning. And it can express its own meaning completely, even when it's taken out of the main sentence. I repeat or I explain. If we take out this uh, a clause uh, from the main sentence, and if its meaning is intact and it gives full complete meaning or it gives a complete sense then it will be called a principal clause the meaning of a principal clause is always intact there will be no change even if we take out this uh, this clause out of the main sentence okay if we uh, separate this uh, clause from the main, uh, main sentence, the meaning will be intact. And it doesn't depend on other clauses. It, uh, this uh, thing uh, is similar to the uh, first item. Last item is similar to the first item. Independent clause, it means it does not depend on any other clauses for its meaning. It can uh, freely or independently express its meanings. Let's see some example. People watch TV so that they can be entertained. It is, a, it is also a very simple sentence. People watch TV so that, or in order that, they can be entertained. People watch TV uh, because they uh, want to be entertained, they want to be uh, delighted, or they want to be, uh, they want fun. So they want, uh, they watch television. Here, in this sentence, there are two clauses. Or here, in this sentence, there are two subject and two final verbs. People watch TV. It is a clause because uh, here is a subject and a final verb. People is a subject, final, watch is a final verb. So that they can be uh, entertained. And there is also an, another clause because there is a subject and a finite verb 
they is a subject and can is a final verb so we can say that in this sentence there are two clauses but the question is what is which one is a principal clause and which one is not a principal clause uh, we will not discuss a subordinate clause here you have to tell me what is uh, which of these two clauses are a principal clause and which one of these clauses are not a principal clause think for a while okay people watch tv if we separate or if we take uh, this part people uh, watch tv from the main sentence is it clear to you is uh, this part uh, clear to you or is this part meaningful right this clause gives full meaning complete meaning and there is no need of other words it is a full sentence even if we take out we have taken out this part from the main sentence but the next clause so that they can be entertained this clause does not mean or does not give complete meaning this clause does not give complete sense so the first one is a principal clause the second one is not a principal clause and why the second one is not a principal clause i will uh, explain in the uh, next chapter let's see another example one day when a thief entered his room he caught him do you know this uh, um, a story the story of uh, haji muhammad mahasi one day uh, when haji muhammad mahasi was uh, saying his prayer a thief entered his room and you must have heard this story and uh, uh, we have we must have discussed this uh, story in uh, rearrange or any other topic with uh, uh, another topic okay in this sentence one day this 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 is not a fact when a thief entered his room he caught him let's um, separate or take out uh, the two clauses he caught him it is a clause and it is a principal clause why when we take out he, the clause he caught him from the main sentence this clause gives us full meaning we understand everything there is no uh, feeling of uh, lacking there is no lacking here we and we all understand what is what it means what uh, the uh, speaker said he caught him this is uh, clear to you all but when a thief entered his room if we say when a thief entered his room and we uh, finished uh, our sentence here there is no sense it gives us no sense so he caught him is a final uh, principal clause if you understand comment below which of the following clauses is a principal clause if you watch television you will learn many things in this sentence there are two clauses if you watch television it is a clause and you will learn many things it is a clause and you have to tell me which one is a principal clause here and give your answer in the comment section and the second type or second kind of uh, uh, clauses is subordinate clause and what is a subordinate clause let's see subordinate clause is also called a dependent clause opposite to the principal clause principal clause is not a dependent clause that is an independent clause right but subordinate subordinate means independent uh, sorry uh, subordinate means dependent so it is a dependent clause it depends on, on a principal clause for uh, expressing its meanings it can't express full meaning if it is taken out of the main sentence if we take out or if we separate this clause from the main main sentence the meaning of this uh, clause will, uh, can, will not be intact 
and it will uh, not uh, uh, give us any sense it will be incomplete sentence uh, sense it will give us an incomplete sense and it starts with a subordinate conjunction this, this is a very important um, fact you have to uh, remember it and you have to understand it and if you understand this thing it will be very easy for you to uh, recognize uh, or uh, identify an a uh, subordinate clause it starts with a subordinate conjunction and what uh, what are the subordinate conjunctions do you know okay if you don't know I, I will give them right now okay the next item generally a comma is placed after it if it comes at the beginning of a sentence if a subordinate clause sits or is at the beginning of a sentence we have to place a comma uh, after that let's see some examples example one if you come i will meet you it is a condition on condition that you come i will meet you or uh, on the condition of you coming i will meet you here are two clauses if you come i will meet you if you come is a subordinate clause why because it starts with a subordinate conjunction if if is a subordinate conjunction do you know <laughs> Okay, if you don't know, let's see another example. Okay, do you know the subordinate conjunctions? If not, let's see them. You have to pause the video and write uh, these things, these subordinate conjunctions on your notebook because these are important for you. As, since, because. These are similar in meaning. So I wrote this together. If even if though or although these two words are similar in meaning before after here we have to remember that before and after are also preposition these two words are also conjunctions subordinate conjunctions it means these two words may be preposition maybe subordinate conjunctions um, uh, according to the context I will explain uh, it uh, uh, later broadly but uh, I, I I want to tell you now just uh, one thing that if we see a clause before and after before these two words before and after these two words these two words are you uh, will be called con subordinate conjunction Okay, no problem. Uh, we will see some examples, then it will be clear to you. Till, until, whether, that, so that. These are subordinate conjunctions. There are also some sub other subordinate conjunctions. Lest, unless. And all the WH words are also used as a subordinate conjunction. WH words are basically or mainly wh words are interrogative words Inter there, there, there are some interrogative pronouns interrogative adjectives and interrogative adverbs but all these interrogative words may be subordinate conjunctions if they join two or more than two clauses they will be called subordinate conjunctions not interrogative words if we use them for interrogation or asking some question then these words will be called interrogative pronoun interrogative adjective or interrogative adverb okay that's not a problem what whatever if we add ever after the wh word it must be a subordinate conjunction right what is the subordinate conjunction? What is what may be an interrogative pronoun? But whatever is always a subordinate conjunction, which is an interrogative adjective. Whichever a subordinate conjunction must be subordinate conjunction. Who interrogative pronoun or subordinate conjunction? Whoever subordinate conjunction. Whom interrogative pronoun? Whomever subordinate conjunction. Whose interrogative adjective? Whosoever 
interrogative uh, sorry subordinate conjunction must be when interrogative adverb or subordinate conjunction whenever subordinate conjunction where interrogative adverb wherever interrogative is not uh, interrogative uh, it is subordinate conjunction must be why it is interrogative adverb or subordinate conjunction how how may be interrogative adverb uh, or interrogative uh, subordinate conjunction and however must be subordinate conjunction so it is clear that if we add ever after the wh words then it will be called subordinate conjunctions no problem some examples let's see as the sailor killed the bird he bought bad luck to the crew it is a very famous example uh, i always found this example when i was a student i uh, have encountered the, uh, the i encountered this example many times okay no problem it is a, a sentence from ancient medina uh, it, it is a very famous story and it, it is also a poem as the sailor killed the bird is a subordinate clause why what is the reason because it starts with a subordinate conjunction what is the subordinate conjunction here as as is a subordinate conjunction as the as the clause as the sailor killed the bird starts with as or as as um, with a subordinate conjunction it is called the clause will be called as a, a subordinate conjunction a subordinate clause right he brought bad luck to the crew it is not a subordinate cl uh, clause it will be, it is a principal clause because there is no subordinate clause before he, before that and we if we uh, take uh, that part he uh, he brought bad luck to the crew if we uh, separate or uh, take out this part from the main sentence the meaning will be intact another example let's see wait here until i return can you tell me what is the principal clause and what is the subordinate clause here right until i return until i return is a subordinate clause why because it starts with until until is a subordinate clause until i return is a subordinate clause good because it starts with a subordinate conjunction until wait here until i return Number three, coordinate clause. We understood principal clause. A principal clause is a dependent clause. If we take a principal clause out of the main sentence, the meaning will be intact, right? You have to understand it very easy, very well. And a subordinate clause is a dependent clause. And it depends on a principal clause for its meaning. And a subordinate clause starts with a subordinate conjunction now if uh, we uh, understood the previous two clauses two, uh, two types it will be very easy for us to understand this clause coordinate clause coordinate clause is nothing but uh, two or more than uh, two principal clauses i repeat coordinate clause is basically a principal clause connected with another principal clause with and or but thus so then both the clauses are called coordinate clauses is it clear let me explain suppose there are two principal clauses both the clauses are complete in their own field on their own they can give complete meaning if these two clauses are connected with these three uh, or four uh, one two three four five five conjunctions these are coordinate conjunctions not subordinate conjunctions these are coordinate conjunctions if two or more than not more than actually uh, uh, most of the time um, uh, two principal clauses are connected with and or but thus and so if it is then we can say that this these are coordinate clauses actually coordinate clauses are nothing but principal clauses they are principal clauses just they are connected with coordinate 
conjunctions so they are called coordinate process it is very simple i think let's see some example he worked hard and succeeded in life he may be silent no problem in uh, okay we will see it later it is a compound sentence actually in compound sentence if the two subjects are similar and then we can omit or we can keep the second uh, second subject silent no problem uh, you can uh, uh, write it here or you can say no problem he worked hard and he succeeded in life here he worked hard is a clause he succeeded in life it is also a clause because there are uh, there is a subject in he worked hard and there is also a subject he succeeded in life there is a finite verb there is a uh, in both bo there, there are fi fi finite verbs in both the sentences so both the clauses are coordinate clauses because they are principal clauses connected with and he worked hard is a principal clause because if we take this clause from the main sentence and the meaning will be intact and the, mean, and the meaning will be understandable there will be no lacking of understanding and he succeeded in life it is also complete in meaning both of the clauses are principal clauses but here these uh, we cannot say these uh, as principal clauses because these clauses are connected with coordinate clauses uh, sorry it's coordinate conjunctions so we have to uh, say that these are coordin uh, sorry coordinate clauses right if two or more than two principal clauses are connected with coordinate uh, conjunctions then the, the clauses will be called coordinate clauses okay that's it that's another example you have to work hard or you can't succeed in life you have to work hard it is a clause and it is a principal clause if we uh, put a full stop here after hard then the sent sentence will be complete and uh, you can't succeed in life if we uh, take this part out of the sentence this will also be uh, complete in meaning but these two clauses are connected with or the two clauses are connected with sorry uh, here and the front um, there is a spelling mistake connect it will be connected the two clauses are connected with or so these are coordinate clauses actually these uh, were the things i should summarize on the topic here before uh, finishing my classes i should uh, summarize in this lesson we have learned what is a phrase what is a clause and what is the difference between a phrase and a clause and what are the types of clauses okay let's uh, conclude a phrase is towards having no finite verb used as a one part of speech or used as a single part of speech just like that a clause is two or more than two words having a subject and finite verb a subject is not important a finite verb there must be a finite verb a subject may be silent a there must be a finite verb and we can explain it in a another way if a sentence is used as a part of another sentence this is uh, uh, called a clause not a sentence then this sentence will be will not be called a sentence so this will be called a clause and there are three types of clauses principal clause subordinate clause and coordinate clause principal clause it is independent clause uh, it uh, has a full meaning complete meaning and subordinate clause is a dependent clause it does not have a complete meaning it depends on the principal clause for its meaning and the uh, important thing to recognize a subordinate clause is that a subordinate clause always starts with a subordinate conjunction and i have already given you the um, lists the list of subordinate conjunctions you have to uh, you should uh, understand 
or you should memorize you can memorize these words no problem it will be beneficial for you okay the last thing is a coordinate clause coordinate clause is nothing but principal clauses coordinate clauses are also principal clauses but they are connected with some coordinate conjunctions and or but so and thus so just five conjunctions mainly three conjunctions and or but sometimes we use not as a subordinate uh, coordinate conjunction that is not important here so i think it is clear to you and i would like to finish my class here and uh, i have uh, taken so much time already and then the uh, videos the video is going to be very large i would not uh, like to enlarge or uh, lengthen my videos anymore i'd like to uh, finish here uh, today in the next class uh, in this serial or in this sequence i will discuss uh, the main top and the, uh, the other another topic there that mm, that, uh, that that topic will be uh, related to this to today's topic no problem we will maintain sequence okay mm, thanks for watching and uh, before um, finishing my video i would like to invite you to uh, like this page and uh, share this page with your uh, classmates if they don't uh, uh, know about this page and if you are a guardian then you should um, uh, show this video to your uh, children if they are students uh, studying in uh, our school or in any other school they may um, there may be some benefits for them and uh, before going um, there may another thing i would like i will uh, upload this video on uh, facebook page on my uh, youtube channel you can uh, visit my youtube channel no problem i will uh, give the description uh, i will keep the link in the description okay mm. thank you thank you uh, thanks uh, for watching and bye and take care i see you in the next class I pray for me. Thank you, everybody.